KFWB News Time 602. Less than 20 minutes have passed since the police withdrawal from Florence and Normandy, but the increase in violence is dramatic. We're having one store that apparently is being looted at this time. This may be the flashpoint of the unrest that people were talking about. Everything is great! Everything is great! I've seen at least 20 to 30 young people uh, throwing rocks. You can hear them impacting against cars and against trucks. I haven't seen any police officers coming here. All the only police for the blacks the scene has really gone crazy out here right now i've taken about seven hits from bricks bottles and uh, other debris in the last uh, 45 seconds the uh, phrase that some people said is quite accurate uh if you're white you don't belong here tonight get out of here as fast as you can save yourself Officers Lisa Phillips and Dan Nee, who have been ordered out of the area, monitor a radio message. A woman is trapped in her car, unconscious. Dan and I looked at each other and said, let's go. We, you know, we have to go. We can't leave this woman in her car getting killed. And uh, we saw probably about 30 people around the car just pummeling the, the, the vehicle with sticks and rocks, bottles. Uh, we devised a plan that... Dan would go to the vehicle and try and get the woman out, and I would uh, try and fend off the crowd as best I could. I had my gun out, and I was sort of doing circles around Dan and around our vehicle. Well, I knew Lisa would be watching my back, so I, you know, I just turned my back in the crowd and uh, picked her up. We got back in the car. Uh, we were just being pummeled. It felt like rain on the roof. It was just a constant drumming of rocks and bottles hitting the car. And the rear window blew out, uh, showering everybody with glass. Uh, and we got out of there. At 618, officers of the 77th police station are ordered to regroup some two miles away at a bus depot, which has been designated as their temporary command center. Across town, police headquarters at Parker Center is under a ragged sort of siege. Hundreds of protesters whose only mission appears to be taunting the police. At that point, the police throw up a barricade. They stop the, the protesters about 20 feet out from the main doors of Parker Center. They stop them. And they're trying to hold them back. They're trying to inch them back to the curb. It's just this back and forth. This game of giant game of chicken between the cops and the protesters. Stanley Scheinbaum, the president of the police commission, had just arrived at police headquarters. At the rear garage exit, he had passed Chief of Police Gates, who was leaving the center. I ran into the chief, and he was getting into a car. There was I going down there to find out what was going on. Uh, and I asked him where he was going, somewhat surprised that he was leaving, although he could have been going to some command post out in the field for all I knew. And uh, he didn't answer my question, even some remark about I have something to do. I didn't believe it when I heard it. Uh, I didn't believe it. I thought that uh, he was someplace uh, taking charge someplace. So, uh, yes, it was a shock to me to find that he was at a fundraiser. It's 6.30. The protest at police headquarters is turning violent. Chief Gates has left Parker Center on his way to Brentwood where he'll attend a political fundraiser to fight Proposition F, legislation which would give the mayor more power over the police chief. Why on that Wednesday afternoon, early evening, about 6.30, just as things looked as though they were beginning to get a little bit out of hand, was it so important for you to go after that fundraiser? Well, Ted, it was not important, uh, but let me just say that we had not received in my office uh, any reports of anything serious that we did not believe we could not handle. We'd already set up the uh, emergency operations center. That was an operation. I had appointed uh, field commanders. Uh, everything was in operation. We believed our deployment was good. Uh, I felt very comfortable in what was taking place at that particular time. Uh, but to answer your question very directly, there is no good reason for my attending uh, that uh, group. I don't know. 
I don't know who was running the show. And I don't think anyone can tell you who was running the show. The show was kind of just running itself. It's 6.43 at Florence and Normandy. I seen a guy off like the southwest corner there jumping on two cars. And then I realized something was wrong, so I tried to get out of the way, but it was too late. Yeah, I really don't know what I was thinking. I just wanted to get out of there, but every time I tried to get up, they would knock me back down. Above the intersection of Florence and Normandy streets, television helicopters are feeding live pictures out to the whole country. The nation is wired to that intersection and to what is about to happen. And there's no police presence down here. They will not enter the area. This is attempted murder. Tell LAPD to shut Florence Boulevard down and Normandy. UPI reporter Bob Brill phones in a live report on the Reginald Denny beating. The man is up now. His clothes are torn. He's still bleeding all over the place. He's trying to get back into his truck. He is getting back into his truck. He's trying to get out, trying to drive through this intersection now. I hope he has enough power to, on his own to just get out of the area. I'm a news reporter. But then, abruptly, Brill himself comes under attack. Something. Can't tell. Oh, God! Oh! Oh, God! Oh, God! Oh, God! Oh, God! Oh, God! Whoever it was then started kicking me in the face and stomping on my head. Probably about, I don't remember any more than a half dozen blows. I don't remember exactly how many there were, but it seemed like about that many. All the time they were saying, get the hell out of here. We want you out of here. Tens of millions of people across the country are mesmerized by what is happening in and around that crossroad of South Central Los Angeles. It is television at its most riveting and horrifying. But live TV also becomes the carrier of a virus. At one and the same time, television conveys the fever of street violence and the impotence of the police. The beatings, the looting, the arson spread. Ironically, during these critical moments, television does not reach Mayor Bradley, who was at the first AME church, or Chief Gates, who was en route to that fundraiser, or 12 of the department's 18 police captains who were racing back from a training seminar in Ventura, some 65 miles away. Nor is there a television at that municipal bus depot, which is now the temporary command center for the officers of the 77th Street Police Station. No TV and very limited communications. The phones are locked and can only be used to accept incoming calls. Chief Gates will later focus on that scene as an isolated and brief aberration. All of our 77th Street units were pulled out of the field, uh, taken to a command post at uh, 54th and Van Ness, and then not released, uh, redeployed uh, into the field. And uh, that occurred at uh, 616, that's when they were ordered there. So from that period till about uh, 651, uh, we did not put any units in the 77th Street uh, area. That's a mistake. And uh, why that mistake was ta took place, uh, I have not yet uh, obtained a, a, a good answer. Officers on the scene, though, recall a breakdown that seemed to extend far up the command structure and well beyond 35 minutes. Uh, the actual police officers and field supervisors had no clue what, what we were doing. We were just waiting for instructions, and we weren't getting the instructions. And so we just continued to wait, and it wasn't until two, two and a half hours later until we got instructions what to do. But we just sat, and we sat, and we sat, and in the meantime, we were hearing radio calls coming out, boom, 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 of major trouble, people getting beaten, people getting robbed, buildings burning, looting. I mean, it was just crazy. It was just frustrating for us to sit there and we could see fires going all along all around us and we were listening to the radio and we could hear, you know, Florence and Normandy any anytime the police are going to show up, but uh, we were told not to respond. Why wasn't there a list of priorities uh, that could have been foreseen? Why wasn't there a uh, a plan to save the the economic heart of our division. Why wasn't there a plan to go to the the surplus stores where the guns and ammunition are? Um, there there was nothing that was. If there was a plan, it wasn't put into into effect.
With no real police presence in the street, individual citizens throw themselves in harm's way to protect complete strangers. The Reverend Benny Newton sees truck driver Fidel Lopez being beaten. Home video cameras are rolling. They were attacking anybody that wasn't black. He ran across the street and they caught him. And when they caught him, they began to kick him and hit him and beat him with, 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 with sticks. And all along I was trying to stop them and they would not stop. And he groaned and rolled over and uh, he literally stopped breathing. And at that time when I saw that, uh, I threw my body across Tim to, to protect him from hitting him anymore. I says, no more, this is enough. You're gonna have to kill me too. I was one of the innocent people who arrived at the wrong place at the wrong time when people were angry, furious, ready to kill. I saw the pastor and I said, please don't leave me. And he listened. He didn't leave me. Raul Aguilar was attacked while he pushed his broken down van along Florence Avenue. Watching from their front porch were James and Barbara Henry. The guy with the crowbar went in front, broke his um, front mirror out, and the other guy took the pole before he could even see him or anything and just hit him on the back of the head, and he went down. And about that time, a car came by and, and, and ran over his legs. So I knew I had to get him and, and get him to the side, but before he got hit again. I, I just didn't want to see him die, you know. When he visited me, and uh, and I saw him because I knew what he has done for me and I was still in the bed so when he came I, I, I hugged his arm and I love him police still unable to drive through the intersection of Florence and Normandy decide to dispatch a helicopter to assess the area officers had heard that motorists were being beaten when things go wrong, they go wrong in numbers. Uh, the initial helicopter uh, had a mechanical problem and had to um, sit down in an emergency location, which now presented us with another problem, and that was is the security and safety of the helicopter and the officers on board. While leaders at the command post struggled to close off the area, a second helicopter is dispatched to survey the intersection. Apparently, it arrives during a lull. The pilot reports back that the intersection is quiet. The quiet does not last. Just after seven, a deputy chief tells an aide to Mayor Bradley, it's getting ugly. We may need the National Guard. The violence has moved and spread and grown. <laughs>